What's up everyone? I hope you can hear me. Once again, I know I'm speaking quietly. Um, I've been trying to get in front of the camera for like a few weeks now, so I'm sorry for the radio silence, but it's finals week and if anybody here knows what that's like, you know why I have not been able to do anything, you know, besides homework. Now despite the title of the video, this is not going to be talking about like people who make low quality suits or low quality suits themselves or what have you. We're not going to be naming names or anything. What I want to talk about instead is more along the lines of how people react to low quality suits. And one of the reasons I want to talk about how people react to low quality suits is because <laughs> more often than not, it's exaggerated. It's like, I don't want to say it's not true because I, it sure, certainly all has the truth to it, but it's just, it does more harm than it does good. So I really want to talk about the, I don't want to, I don't know, I'm very hesitant with saying right and wrong way because obviously everybody has their own way of reacting to this, to this stuff. So I guess I'll say in a less harmful way to both the maker and the customer. It's just that I'm so tired of seeing people use the term falling apart for a suit that is low quality. Because here's the thing, have you, do you know the definition of falling apart? It means literally coming apart. It cannot stay together. A suit that has a pop seam or like a little bit of glue on it, that suit is not falling apart. It just, it's not. By definition, it is not. And so I want to try and encourage you by, if you're watching this video, about better ways to go about dealing with your low quality suit and how to get it fixed and how to make other people aware of it without being like insanely dramatic and tearing everybody down with you. Yeah. So getting and responding to a low quality suit is a process. So we're going to go in order of that process and I'm going to tell you, I guess, how exactly to address each parts of the process. So let's start at the beginning. Gonna start from the customer side. You're a customer, you just got a low quality suit, either knowingly because you commissioned a first time maker and you knew they didn't have a good quality, or unknowingly and you thought you commissioned a more professional maker and you just ended up getting something that just wasn't as high quality as you expected. Either way, you have a low quality suit now. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you, even if you don't wanna do this, please disregard the skill level of the maker because Right now, your product, regardless of how much skill the maker had, you got the same kind of product. So it's a low quality suit. We're gonna start there. So you have a low quality suit and you're upset about it. What do you do? Well, I'm assuming if you're, you know, a decent person or whatever, you want it fixed. Here's what you do. Message your maker privately, email, DM, whatever you wanna do and say, Hi, I just received my fursuit in the mail, or I've worn it once or twice or whatever, and I noticed that it popped a seam, or I noticed that the fur was shaped down a little much, or I noticed that it had like um, some string hanging out, whatever your issue is. Is there anything that can be done to have this fixed? I will pay for any repairs. If you have repair fees, please get back to me something like that. Be very nice about it. Don't, this is what you don't do as a customer. Message your maker privately and be like, I just got the suit and it already has a pop seam and what is going on? And I expected better. And I just paid this much money for it. It's not worth this money. If this is already, have. don't do that. You know why? Because listen, listen, fursuits are artwork and fursuit makers are humans. Humans make mistakes on art pieces. How many times can you tell me that even if it's not a fursuit, any kind of artistic creation you've ever created, you built it perfectly. No flaws, none whatsoever. You can't say that, can you? Because we all make mistakes, either knowingly or unknowingly. More often than not, this maker sent out their suit and they just didn't catch it. They didn't see that mistake and that is, <coughs> that is, 100% their fault, but they just they didn't know. They didn't want to sabotage your product intentionally. They legitimately made a human error. And so freaking out at them for something that they may or may not have even knowledge of having done is not the right way to go about it. You freak them out, you paint yourself in a bad image, and it's already from there, it's already going downhill. Okay, now we're moving on to the fursuit makers. 
if you're a fursuit maker and you just received one of those messages about something wrong with your product, here is what you do. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I am so sorry for that. <clears throat> I must have missed that issue with the suit before I send it out. I would be more than willing to make the fix for you. Here are my fees if you have any. Please mail it to this address and I will fix it up as soon as I can. Easy as that, something similar to that anyways. Just offer to fix it. You're, it's fine to ask for fees to fix it because of course it is still more work. But just be pleasant about it, especially if they approach you pleasantly. Here's what you don't do as a suit maker. Well, that mistake, I couldn't have made that mistake. I don't know how that got there. That's not my fault. You need to fix it yourself. Maybe you should find somebody else to fix it for you. That's not my problem anymore. Yeah, because believe it or not, <clears throat> oh my God, I'm sorry. There are professional level fursuit makers who have given that response to their customers. Customers have approached them with issues and they just flat out either refuse to fix them or blame the customer. Do not do that. It's not the customer's fault. It's your fault. Take responsibility. It's just, that's how it is. And so please, if you're a suit maker, do not feel antagonized. They are not coming to you because they want to make you feel bad. They are bringing up an issue and a product. And if you just respond very politely and very civilly, they will too. And problem solved. Nobody knows about it. And on that topic, let's keep going. So, positive road, uh, the, the happy ending of the game. If your customer messaged you, gave you a really, a really polite response on what was wrong, and you politely responded, you will fix it, game over, happy ending, you both win. They're getting a fixed product, you're getting a chance to fix your mistake, and you still have a good name. End of story, it's over. Now, let's go into the bad ending of the game, because this is where it starts to escalate. So regardless of if the customer uh, antagonized you or you antagonize the customer, this is what's going to happen next. Most cases, what happens is the if the fursuit maker is be the one being antagonizing, which unfortunately seems to be most the case in these situations, they start to ignore the customer. If you're a suit maker, please do not ignore your customers. I know my, you might feel ashamed, or you might feel guilty, or scared, or you don't want to talk to them, or whatever, but please do not ignore them, because then what happens is this. Public reviews. And let me just say, public reviews, public call-outs, public cleaning of your dirty laundry is never good for either party, and let me explain why. So, you're the customer, you can't get in contact with your maker, you have a low quality product, you're very upset. You decide to go make a post detailing everything wrong with your fursuit. And now, as a suit maker, your dirty laundry has just been aired in front of the entire fandom and they all know that your product is low quality. And it's just not a pretty scene. It's fun for no one. If you're the customer, you still have a bad product and you now have giving yourself a name as a narc and I mean sometimes it has to be said I'm not saying don't make these kind of like reviews but if you're going to make these reviews please be honest about them show exactly what is wrong don't rip your suit apart don't pull everything out because you said a seam is popped or whatever please calmly show what is wrong that way if you're gonna make these public uh, executions then at least you're being truthful about it, you're being pleasant about it, and you're just getting the word out. You don't want, I know it's fun to sound dramatic and be like, this thing is the worst product ever, I shouldn't have never bought it. But please don't do that. Just be realistic and you'll still get your point across. And now, as a fursuit maker, your name has just been dragged through the mud. And do you know how hard it is to bring your name back up? The first thing you learn in customer service is if somebody experiences a good experience, they'll tell three people. If they experience a bad experience, they'll tell ten people. And so it is so much harder to build yourself back up from the ground than to just, you know, stay in the middle ground and keep going up. So, and you know why these customers make these public call out posts? Because they're trying to get a response from you. They're trying to get a rise out of you or they're trying to get you to notice them and they're trying to amass a, a group of followers to help them do it. And this all could have been avoided if you just didn't ignore them. If you owned up to your problem. 
it's just, it's a bad situation. So now, final result, you have a customer who still has a bad product, who had to drag your name through the mud, who's probably still unhappy, and you now have a besmirched name that's gonna take forever to get back up, and people, I trust me, if your name is dragged through the mud once, you will never be able to live it down. So the moral of the story is, if you get a low quality fursuit, please do your best to settle it privately and civilly. I know that's not always the case. I know these these big explosions happen because one party just doesn't want to cooperate. It happens. I know you have to react the way you do, but I'm trying to make this video to tell you that if you are on this, this is how you should react as a maker or a customer and just save everybody the trouble because these things are never fun for either side. The only side they're fun for is somebody who's not in the situation, just an onlooker, because guess what? They get drama to read and you know, drama. So that's my spiel for now. And once again, please take all this into consideration. The next time you receive a low quality product, don't publicly execute the fursuit maker and fursuit maker, please take responsibility for your work. Okay, that's all for now, guys. Um, I hope this was fun to watch. I don't know if this came off as kind of a rant, even though a little bit was, maybe. I don't know. I don't mean anything mean by it. I'm just trying to help you guys um, deal with these issues when they arise. Hopefully, you get the happy ending and the maker decides to work with you and you get a fixed product and that's, that's how it goes. But yeah, so that's it for now. Um, as always, tell me what you want to see in, down below and I'll try and get to it. I know that I've been getting tons of comments about paw tutorials and I will get to it, I swear. Because of the amount of uh, requests I've gotten for it, I'm actually going to make a paw tutorial. Not just, you know, a tips and tricks. I'm going to make a tutorial. But that takes time and that's time I don't have right now, so I will get to it. So please don't ask about the paws right now. They're coming. I Trust me, they are. But in the meantime, tell me other things you'd like me to talk about or smaller tips on, you know. But yeah, that's it for now. Okay, bye.